What up, buddy? How you doing, dude? Yep. I missed you Pretty over good. the weekend. Genuinely. I missed you over the weekend. I did. That was great to hear. Why, right, what's up? Nothing. I spent the last couple of days in Germany, in Berlin, uh, enjoying myself. Um, out for a game design retreat. That, you know, we you know oh, yeah. we were both invited to, but um, just me being in Ireland made it super easy to just be like, let's make the leap. It was 129 euro <laughs> to and fro and everything else in between. Oh. But yeah, it's super enjoyable time. Um, ended up right, just to give you the high level, okay? 16 of us, uh, all designers, all senior people, like from different levels of seniority, but all senior up to like, hey, I've owned companies and ran companies before, all just basically in an, in an, uh, what was supposed to be our own Airbnb to ourselves, um, ended up being all of us, plus like three Polish builders as well, too, <laughs> who hated <laughs> us. They hated us. Um, and we all broke off into groups, uh, connected, talked, and had these, you know, great discussions about uh, a myriad of different topics just overall. Uh, and really just kind of, you know, like intensively, I don't know, tried to come out with something. There was no real, there was, you know, some intention going in. But in the most part, it was like, where we don't really know where this is going to go. We don't know how this is going to go, especially with these individuals and these groups as well, too. Um, we need to try and, but let's just see. Uh, and I think that that it fundamentally was fantastic. It really was. It was something that... I'm so jealous. <laughs> I'm so jealous. It's, you know, regardless of the place or anything like that, the fact that you get to meet and talk about work-life balance and stuff like that with some of the European developers compared to, you know, like the Americans as well too, right? Like, it really overshadows, or, or not overshadows, but puts into perspective, like, the American grind set at the same time, you know what I mean? The The ideal that, like you don't get time off you really do work the entire time and if you're not working on two or three different things at once you are failing and they don't have that um every single one of them didn't have that at all and not in a negative way that's not a negative thing they were all you know ex everybody was extremely competent and successful within their own within their own right i think it's just kind of over it it it, it shadowed the problem of like a lot of the times you know, working too hard is like negative. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it isn't constructive. You know what I mean? Because you're not able to dedicate your brain space towards a problem at almost all fronts. You know, um, you're always thinking about like, what's the next thing I need to implement versus like, okay, can I take a little, little zoom out from all of this kind of stuff? You know what I mean? Um, but I'll give you, the, I'll give you the scope, right? So, we sure. get in, we get well, let in. me uh, let me paint a little bit of context yeah, too, too, for others. Yeah. Is uh, so these game dev, game designer retreats, they're pretty rare, but they um they they do happen. And there's a, there's a very famous one. It was formerly called Project Horseshoe. That's where people like Raf Koster and Dan Cook and other very famous uh, and even authors of game designers get together. They tackle really hard problems. They divide into different groups to do it. And then, um, so this retreat that I heard of, that's only the second other retreat that I know of. But I think it's so cool to just basically take the biggest minds, including yourself, of the game industry to, <laughs> to get together and you crack, uh, crack open these hard problems together. That's basically how these work. And they're, 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 they sound so awesome. So Yeah, so I knew, no I knew nothing about these. I, I knew nothing about these, right? But when I looked into them more, it's like, yeah, obviously, these are very closed door things. You know what I mean? These are very clearly like people just putting these things together out of their own friend groups and building their own communities. Well, I think what it really reminded me of or like felt like is if you're in the artist, you know, like history circles or anything yeah. like that, right? This is like those people that sit in those cafes and they'll be there all day. All they do is discuss their topic of art and, and drive it home with other people. And they build their little, you know, creative collectives within all of those own structures. And in doing so, they are able to. It's like, yes, knowledge share, but also like keep each each one of you, each one invigorated on a 
different pathway that you might not have come out to if you were just on your own doing your own thing. Yes. And I think that that peer yes. pressure as well too, uh, and the uh, the allowance, right? We say like, hey, this is, we are going to dedicate ourselves to this right now. We are affording ourselves the time to actually think about the big problem. Um, is a it's, it's not it's not something that you get to do in your own work a lot of the time, and you don't always get to meet people who are who are about that, you know. So uh, that's that's how it and felt. That's how it felt to me. That's what I, that's how I how I was thinking about it. You know what I mean? I think that's yeah. I think that's a great comparison, and I also think that it's really important because somebody okay, if if you're a viewer and you haven't done this sort of thing in your life, you might think, oh, that's really elitist. Why is it all closed doors? But yeah. honestly, when you're digging into a deep topic, you do not want 10 people because, I, I mean, maybe not that many, but because you just like can't get to the heart of certain things. You want like a really small group of people who are who know how to gel together. And that, um, so, so, so I do believe that this uh, a smaller group is really great for these. Yeah. You mean, look, th this is also, yeah, like the not be, you know, an elitist thing as well, too. Like, uh, I've, again, never heard of him. Just lucky that I got invited. That's all I would say is I was just so thankful that I got invited. Because uh, I never would have thought that I'd get invited to something like that uh, at all, genuinely. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I mean, it was just, you know, that's, that's just how it is. Uh, I think, like, later on, you work a couple of years. You know, I mean, I'm doing this 10 years now. This is the importance of also just building friendships and within, you know, every rule networking, blah, blah, blah. Just build friendships. I think it was like a great thing that, you know, uh, not to go off topic, but I failed at GDC and I realized this kind of like after the fact, right, where uh, I made a lot of conversations very transactional, where instead of having a conversation and saying, hey, how's it going? Where are you at? What's going on? And really meeting people where they are. Um, you're stuck going to, through the spiel of your games and your, your everything that you don't, you don't just drive into the connection harder than anything else. Like you don't meet that person as a person. You meet them as like an entity that is part of this group or this conglomerate. And maybe you can get something from them. You know what I mean? At the same time too. Money, 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 money. But in this case, I, you know, it's, uh, I've learned a lot from, from that experience as well too. And, and trying to take that into this approach and, and also just like, I try to come out, you know, we're all game designers. We're all individuals. We are all in our fields. We all do our own thing and game designers know perspective. That's what we should know perspectives and perspective lenses, but long and short, right? We get into it. It's from Thursday to, to Sunday. Sunday is a travel day going home, so we do most of our work, you know, um, the start on the Thursday, uh, get into it really on the Friday and the Saturday, and then, you know, uh, not a lot of time for recap, a lot of, lot of goodbyes on the Sunday as well too, you know? And that's, and that's how it went. Um, the topics, if you want to bring them up there, Calvin, right? Um, the one that I chose was this idea of uh, loops, layers, and diagrams. So... Uh, I don't know if you're able to read the synopsis, but I can always just kind of like, ah, uh, I, I, I'll give you this, I'll give you the whole thing, right? Because obviously I looped it, but. Okay. Um, yeah, it's like a few paragraphs actually. So. Yeah, fuck that. Right. Go for it. So loops, layers, and diagrams are something that game designers use all the fucking time. We use them constantly, right? And there's a lot of different questions of the validity of a lot of these things, how you do them versus how I do them. And there is no common work common word codec or framework around any of these things that allows these diagrams to kind of live within within a space um, a lot of the times we will write these things and instantly they become shelved and invalid r almost right away right um, and this starts from you know when we make our core loop diagram to like are we doing narrative diagrams are we doing systems diagrams are we doing experiential diagrams? What are we doing over here, right? And and I think this is the thing is like not everybody does, you know, every, I think most game designers go to like core loop to economy diagrams, but there was other diagrams and approaches that people had that I had never seen before. And some of those I won't really talk about necessarily too much because they're, 
again kind of like pittering into different ways of other people thinking and uh i one i don't want to misrepresent that but two um i want those people to kind of highlight their own their own ways of doing that in their own ways and when we see those things come out we'll absolutely make sure that those things are uh highlighted because i think that they're important especially on the on the experiential side um go look him up neil edwards He's done a couple of podcasts now and do, done a couple of talking and speaking events a lot more over the, the last like two, three years. Um, UX is fine co-founder. Yeah, he's, he's great. I mean, he's brilliant. But then there was other people there that were as brilliant as well too. And we were all just kind of driving into this topic. So how do we homogenize our ideas down into a framework that allows us to then drive that project, right? Drive those diagrams throughout the life cycle of the project. Uh, and in thinking about it, we were thinking of it like, um, you know, we, uh, of like, uh, how could you almost use these diagrams as like layers within the actual, within, um, within the project itself, right? So like layer zero, like what's layer, what is the absolute root starting point of your game diagram? Well, it's, it's your core loop, right? It's your three box core loop. It's, you know, do thing, get money, you know, spend money, get power, move around, right? Great. Now you need to expand upon that. So then we start going into all of the different directions where things go from there. So one, one layer down, how do we then go and say, okay, well, let's put in the user flow, like a little bit more of like the user journey that's in there over in like an action flow, okay? And then, but from those things, then we also have, we can drive off of that, the economy flow for that flow as well too. Those diagrams might look a little different, but they are, but it's like, Hey, can we almost have like this, you know, is there like a way that in the game design framework, in this framework that we can codify the language between the two so that they can be really inexplicably linked at that layer. And then we can, uh, drive that almost like as like a button toggle so you could say well i'm at this layer i want to look at this thing double click and say hey cool now show me the economy thing for this now show me like how does that build into a user flow or user journey how does that build drive into what's the experiential side of that and how does that build off of all of that now all of a sudden you can start putting these pieces together and going from there we start getting okay, into, so let, let me yeah. get this straight do you, does it, are you saying like there's like five different types of diagrams and they all speak a sort of different language and you guys are trying to find find a way to unify all this under like one model yeah and i think that if you look okay. at like if i look at my work and i looked at other people's work as well too game designers in general make a lot of diagrams but they are all very dispersed right and they all try to drive some form of clarity either towards the design or as a ticket to drive into engineering or to art or anything else, right? It's a way of, you know, you got to ask yourself, right? Like uh, when you're building, a, 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 you know, um, when you're building an economy model diagram or something like that, right? What, who is that for? Like, what problem are you trying to solve with that? Like, is that something, because a lot of the times I'll take those things and I'll show them to other people and they have no idea what's going on. Right. Like yeah. they don't get it. They can't into it. They don't know the structure because the structure you've created in your own head. And by creating that in your own head, you've also then allowed your brain to kind of like fill in the gaps there. So that diagram is now not for other people. It is for you to drive clarity yeah. into your product. So you have yeah. to now take that and then build that into, you know, and build something else that then explains that. But that's more work. And theoretically, more diagrams, not even theoretically, a lot of the times it's more diagrams. Yeah. But those diagrams now become different pieces that are at different levels of when you built them and where you built them in the project's life cycle. So like if you're building that narrative diagram and you built it at pre-prod or ideation phase, well, that could look completely different than when you're in the prototyping phase and how, and we don't connect those things ever, right? So a lot of the times you'll do that thing and you'll kind of throw it away and it becomes invalid. So like, how do you then take that and say, well, great, but we have a language behind this. We have a key, we have colorations, we have, 
the the frequency at, at which you're going through the loops we know like that's you know some I, I got stuck on this really hardcore of like like um i do i got nowhere with it but like the frequency of the loop is kind of important of how fast you're going to go through something a lot because it, it means like to the player journey grinding right like how long are you going to kind of sit within those those structures and i was thinking yeah. about the thickness of the i got so stuck the thickness of the arrow to the next node is like your highway your national road and your b roads right like your your a b and c roads so uh -huh. the thick the thicker that line is the 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 faster the character is going to kind of go through that that thing and that was like one way to kind of codify or like put a put a stamp stamp beside something so that somebody could look at it and be like, okay, that's, we're going to be sitting in like here that. a lot more, but sometimes we break off over to here. Right. Uh, and as a forcing function, it, it just allows people to look at, at something and say, uh, and, and you know, if they, if they can understand that language and understand that key, then, then they can get the framework. They can look at the breadth of your work and infer a lot more information directly from the ground. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so in all of this, we didn't come out to a whole much. What we did come out to though, was a theory um, that we started to drive through with uh, an actual game and kind of stick that into Miro and try to say, okay, we have a thought here. We've explored the kind of different diagrams that we like to use. We've explored different levels at which that we, you know, use them, which was great, right? You're talking to other game designers from across the world and you're saying like, what kind of diagrams do you use? What kind of spreadsheets do you use? When, how do you communicate those diagrams to other people and kind of getting a lot of clarity from those people about all of those things? and how they go about it. And that opens up by itself, just like a world of like, hey, direct to knowledge. Like I could implement that tomorrow. Like system yeah. diagrams that I had, you know what I mean? That I haven't had time to do um, at all. And you're just like, oh, okay. I now see the purpose of this a lot more. Like, yeah, we should absolutely be doing these like all over the place. Um, but then it's like, well, yeah, but that's one thing. But then how does that link into the other thing? And then how do you make them both relevant? Because if we change something over here, you have to change it over here. Otherwise, yeah. they don't align anymore. And then you can't show them to individual people. But if you do and you have a framework around like update this means update that, you can kind of get back to it a little bit more and make it so that they're all alive throughout the whole thing. I know this is like a really sounds... high-level annoying bullshit thing, but it's... It's difficult to, you, I couldn't, it can't really even dive any deeper than that because, you know, that's, that's kind of as, you know, kind of as far as we got <laughs> in a stupid way. But we, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think anybody who's listening to this, like that has done any, like at least a couple of diagrams with game systems, at least knows what you're talking about in that, you know, you're trying to model these really complex systems and figuring how, how upping the gold uh, drop on these monsters are going to mess up your meta systems later. It's, it sounds impossibly complex to figure out. Yeah. And all of that's, you know what I mean? That might just be the econ model, but then how does that play into like, okay, well now we have to up, up, in, exactly. a forcing function again. I've updated that part of that loop in this thing. Well, great. That means now I have to update the user flow. It means I have to update the, um, the experiential flow, because all of a sudden now I might be getting more reward out of this moment and more reward out of that loop. So now we gotta we gotta think about how does that drive into this? And the fact that they, that the that that thinking of okay, how do we link these things together as a theory built into this hypothesis that we started driving through with Brawl Stars. So we took Brawl Stars at the ever loving top of everything is the core loop. That is layer zero. That is absolutely layer zero. Um, and if you are changing anything on layer zero, it changes the direction of your game. Your game is now fundamentally different. And that was a great distinction because everybody, we all did our core loops very differently, but the, the ideal behind it was the same. 
that if you change anything on layer zero, it changes it on every other layer. It's now not the same game anymore. Um, from that layer down, then we start getting into building your core moment to moment gameplays. And then as you then can, as you like add on and expand onto the game, it adds breadth to those, um, to those diagrams which means that we can color those loops differently. They're not now like another layer. Another layer is more about description and the amount of nodes that you have in your actual document. The breadth is more about modeling the actual function, like the actual direction of things. And what I mean by this is like, battle flow is like play game, you know, win, win currency, get, get character, right? Uh, you know, and, and, Kind of up or upgrade and then and then more power blah 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 now all of a sudden we have trophy road well we actually got now a sec we so that's like a whole nother feature that we're adding as like a second part so a second phase so now that becomes level two of layer one because that becomes now an, an outer loop to that main loop and it's kind of nice to distinguish between that because it also tells you in your phases of development where is that going to come into your phase, right? So we don't need to make this right away because it's not needed. And that's a hard thing. If you're looking at a breadth of an entire game and you're saying, we need to make all of this. Well, it's like, what's, what's priority? Well, go back to the diagrams. What's priority based off of the experiential goals that you're setting? Boom, hit that layer, go to that diagram for that layer of the experiential goals. This is what we're looking at. What fills those experiential goals that we want as a pillar? It's this feature. Well, great. That's now layer two or not layer two. That's now level two of layer one, right? That's now the, this next thing that we want. When we want to add more definition, we go down another layer and we expand upon the whole thing. And that's when we start getting into like the branching diagrams, like win loss. How does that build into the loops? And only those things come in with clarity and time on a project. And what I mean by that is layer one is really great for that ideation phase. How do I know that I have a full loop? How do I know that I have a game? How do I know that I have an experience model that I'm trying to drive? It's very nebulous because it's not supposed to be the main thing, but it gives you the goalposts, those stake posts in the ground to say, that's what I'm driving towards. That's what I want the player to do. Great. Next layer down. Where's the branching paths? How do I get there? What are the things off of that, that, you know, that come into more clarity and from those layers, you could even go down even more if you really, you know, if you, if you were so inclined, but now you start getting into that real nitty gritty user flow that you could build out into the, your whole UX side of things as well too. Cause almost every node becomes a screen. It becomes a flow. It becomes something that you're doing. Um, and it was a, just a great, you know, I know, again, I wish I had a whiteboard or something like that. I could just start fucking writing things down. But um, but that's 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 where we got to. Um, I wish we had gotten to more. But I, I will honestly say, say to you that half of the time, and we made most of it with a, you know, with a good amount of Taiski and a good amount of beers uh, at the same time too, we made the most of also just talking to our fellow designer. And trying to uh, trying to connect that way, uh, and learn more about them, and learn more about what they like about games, and yeah, I tell you, yeah. I mean, doing this. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. You're good. Go on. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. I mean, doing this in two days uh, is like a whirlwind of speed. I am curious. So, like, so I know the group had like eight topics to choose from, and you guys split up into groups. Yeah. Is it is was the format like at the end every group kind of presented some kind of conclusion, or did you interact with the other groups at all? We I'm interacted like, with the other groups. We were supposed to do a post, uh, you know, moment. Um, but honestly, I think again, I think that the thing that superseded the lot was genuinely connection. It was just talk, you know, having a good time. When we finished up the day there on the on the on the Saturday, the Saturday night, right? That's we were supposed to, you know, we did a little toast and we did all of that stuff, but we were supposed to, you know, stand up and talk talk to things. But some of the other groups had also said that, like, hey, we have 
we have kind of gone through and run our idea into the ground. Now we need perspective. Now we need to talk to other other teams. So some, uh, you know, we I think a lot of people thought that they would bounce across ideas throughout the weekend. And I thought about this too, right? Like, hey, yeah, I'll jump in for this session and we'll talk about this. And then I might go do something else, right? And go talk about this other thing. And you, you very quickly get to realize that like, no, there's something here and we need to go deeper. We have, we have not even scratched the surface on this conversation after five hours of, you know, intense whiteboarding, looking at things, talking to, talking to your fellow designer, right? They're, we're not even close. Uh, and a lot of people felt that way, I think, on the first day. And a lot of people stuck with their groups then throughout to try and drive something home by the by the end of the weekend. Um, but it was on that kind of Saturday, that Saturday afternoon, that people were like, "Okay, we've kind of we have run a dry a little bit. How how do we get clarity here?" And in getting clarity, I think that that's where um, that's where you you know you you pull out and you you kind of talk to talk to other people that you know in the good old play testing model. You know what I mean, like. People who are not exposed to your thing because you're so deep in it that you've you're looking at it like this now and you you can't see past the wall anymore, so you're just yeah. you're stuck, you know, um, and you need that clarity to kind of pull your pull your head out of your ass as well too as like a good check, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, this whole thing sounds almost like a game jam. It's like super super intense, like couple days, and then you got to present at the end. I mean, obviously you guys didn't, but it sounds like, yeah, it was just a lot to do and a lot of things you guys were curious about. Yeah. And I do know this was the first time this particular retreat had happened. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, maybe kinks in scheduling, but I mean, I don't want to say it as a negative thing because it sounds like you had a, you guys had a great time and just connecting yeah, we, and surrounding yourself with people. Yeah. It's fine. You know, if I bet you if you knew a bunch of people beforehand and you had been mulling over these ideas and these questions and and you and you sat down and said like, okay, we're going to afford ourselves the time to hyper focus into this, you could go farther. But I think you need more sessions to do that and to get out of all of those things. I think you still need more sessions. The fact is, though, I still got something that I think that I could drive directly into my work straight away. If I was going to start a new project, I would absolutely keep this forward of mind. Maybe not, maybe because it's the new hotness for me or whatever, you know what I mean? So it's like, oh, we, everybody, we got to all do this, right? But like, at the same time, I'm like, nah, this was great. This definitely gave me some, some gusto to say, like, again, the problem is we make a bunch of diagrams and we get, they get thrown away. They're also just not clear when we try to show them to other people and they get in, misinterpreted a lot of times wrong. Um, so the, this idea is to try and help build that, build that knowledge against it, keep those things alive, put them at a phase of a project, put them at a development moment within that project as well too, uh, and really help drive that design focus through those diagrams make them way more valuable um like okay that. this might be a little difficult yeah. but because you you mentioned a lot of good stuff and you know like like you even said it was maybe high level because you're still noodling about it but yeah uh, let's say let's say you had a, a student so a student game designer in the making and he's watching this video do you have like a succinct takeaway you could boil down to them uh, about what you learned? If not, that's totally fine. I know this is an advanced topic. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's kind of annoying because I actually, you know, we we built some diagrams in Miro, right? So we actually have, you know, we have some visuals and stuff like that, but I, I can't share screen right now without my my whole internet yeah, blowing yeah. up. Um, uh, I think that the succinct thing for me was that um, diagrams are for designers. Um, they are not clarity tools to show to other people necessarily. Um, there are ways to build clarity within a project, right? For yourself, uh, and, and help to, uh, to build alignment around things, right? So if you're looking at layer zero and you're saying, okay, this is the highest level or the lowest level or whatever you want to say, um, can we all align that this is, this is 
the, the game. This is the thing. These this is the the things that we want the player to do from that experiential side, from the economy side, from the actual moment to moment kind of gameplay side, from you know from the systems side as well too. All on that top side is this. Can we align on this? Great, cool. Down one. How do we branch out from there? How do we build build a little bit more? How do we go and yeah. and start going harder and harder and harder? You know. Um, and yeah. keeping those things alive throughout the project, I think is, is big, but that would be the, that would be the big thing for me is like gain alignment early across multiple vectors, try to keep those things alive. And also just know that everybody needs to understand at that highest level, what is this align on that layer and then come down. Don't go straight to the big diagram. Don't go to that. Abstract up. <laughs> abstract up. Start from there. Come back down on complexity. Okay. Because very good. So yeah. many times I I'm I do this all the time where I sit there and I'd be like, cool. Do, 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 and then there's this loop, and then do 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 do. And then all of a sudden <laughs> you you have this big diagram and you're like. You feel super accomplished about it. You know what I mean? Like you have this big yeah. diagram and you're like, sick, that's it. Oh my God, that's it. No. <laughs> this is it. I figured it out. Um, yeah. And then all of a sudden you show it to other people and they're like, you know, so that's not valuable. It's not. Yeah. It's great. It's you know, good if that, you know, but it's not for everybody else. Yeah. That was super good advice, um, actually. And you, you did hint at it earlier, and I, I immediately related. It's like, yeah, as a designer, you're, you're actually crafting tons and tons of diagrams, uh, and they are just, the majority of them are for you to figure out what the hell you need to do next because it's such a complex problem. And, um, but, you know, uh, very, so something that was related to what you said. Somebody recently asked me about leadership. He asked me about, like, how what what makes a good leader how can you um, how can you become a better leader and obviously that's a gigantic topic uh, there's like a million answers so I just gave him two uh, two answers just to keep it simple the first one I said so for soft skills um, for soft skills if you genuinely show interest in other people and their well-being they will follow you in fact you could be a worse leader than the guy next to you, but if you have, if you are better at demonstrating to that, um, they will they'll follow you. So that's the soft skill. But the hard skill um, one I identified is it's your job as the leader to keep everyone on the same page in terms of information that they need to know, and that's directly related to what you said about the diagrams. Is like you need to boil down some of your the the universal uh, systems. That, that encompass everything into what the, the the programmer needs to worry about and in their sort of in their language. So it's a is a really necessary skill to boil down all this complexity and then think about you know the other person and what they need to know to do their job. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the only thing I tack onto that, and again, like I'm not a leader, I'm not I'm not anything. I'm just just been doing things for a, a while. That's it. That's all I feel like a lot of times is. Um, I guess two things, you're, you're not ahead of the curve. You're just further along the track, right? So younger developers, designers, whatever, they're not dumber than you. They just, they, you know, they're not in like a poor space. They're just not further along the track than you. You've seen things, you've gone around the corners that they haven't gone down. It's, you know, it's just like fundamental or right? they just haven't had the time. So don't think of it as like I'm superior or in any way. It's just just think of it as like they just haven't had the time. Um, open the door for them, then you know try to point them in that direction so they don't close too many doors in their faces. Uh, the other one is is really and this sounds probably like really easy and stupid, but it's like um, lead by doing. You know um, the things that you've done in the past and the things that you do now right in front of people. You know, how, how, you know, are you making a game right now? Or can you show it? Um, talk to me about it. What are you doing here? Right? Like 
that is the thing that lead you know that lead by doing really means i think to me and uh showing people that things are achievable is leadership i think that that is yeah. is like a a fundamental part of of trying to get people to um to jump jump on and jump down you know but you're right yeah. keeping clarity keeping the goals in mind making sure that you're driving those pillars those experiential pillars home as hard as possible throughout the feature but also throughout the game like that is definitely top level deck and um, but coming at things as a, from a human hum, I, I constantly use this word like humanic approach right um we are we are humans and we need to treat humans like humans uh, which is fucking murder and barbarian you know barbaric acts i guess apparently but if you look out into the world right now but you know reach, yeah. you know i mean but drop and drop drop a you know drop a hand quicker than you you make a fist you know what i mean so um i don't know dude you know what i mean i couldn't even tell you like again like uh, it's not imposter syndrome or anything like that but I mean, definitely feel like just lucky to to just be a part and of a great group of individuals that, um, you know, across all of it, not even just in this group, that group, but with you, your own work and your own stuff as well, too. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I just wouldn't feel connected to a lot of these things. And I probably wouldn't be I wouldn't be as good of a designer, but I also wouldn't be doing this, I think, uh, at the same time, too. There's no rule books for this. Like, you know I mean, I don't know, you know, I mean, I was going to school, there was no game design course. And even now I wouldn't say like, go do a college yeah. four year degree in game design. Like I wouldn't do that. I would do it in engineering yeah. or something like that. Right. Something, but I would, I'd still come at it from a game design approach, but I, I just don't, it's just like, it comes down to like, this is a really, this is a really interesting, weird, uh, you know, field of, field of, work play you know this idea of play and um if you if you can stay playful you i think you can tap into some shit around or that's not just game design i think that that is very much like the hello howdy you know the connection of the individual at the same time too yeah uh, this is game design still the wild west and i guess uh you know more takeaways for viewers i I, okay, the, the, the fantasy of the solo designer that just uh, sits in their basement. I mean, it can, it can happen, I suppose, but uh, my recommendation really is, I mean, these, uh, like we talked about these artists. Oh, man, there's a term for, for these like, artists that would just like, get together, like Van Gogh and yeah. all these people would just hang, hang out. There's and nobody wanted to hang out with Van Gogh. That was his whole point of why he fucking they died in desperate. No one wanted to hang out with Van Gogh. Yeah, yeah. Or Van Gogh, as people like to say as well, too. I don't know. Uh, no. uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking mentor. But yeah, if you uh, get together in a group of five and you share projects and you talk about the problems you run into, I, I pretty much guarantee you'll be a better designer, even if Honestly, even if they weren't great designers, the fact that you're doing it on a regular schedule, you will improve. Now, ideally, it would be better if you had a you know a group that worked well. But I, I guess all I'm saying is, going on the solo journey as as high of an ego as we all have, I um, I think it'll improve you uh, almost no matter what. Yeah, uh, I've you know i it, it, throughout life i think it comes down to this you know you move countries and stuff like that as well too and you, you end up you know even if it is in the states you know what i mean you, you know english speaking country so it's a little different but you have to kind of you know something that came back was like find your tribe you know i think it's whether yeah. you're finding your tribe within your friendship group if you're finding your tribe within your working group within your hobby group within your anything like finding your the people that you connect to the most about these things and are open armed and, and excite you about that topic are great people to continually to engage with and to 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 work with i don't think that you have to have a lot of stuff to come to the table with to try to have those yeah. things but i think if those if those doors are open and you can find those people to to have those open conversations with you can learn a lot and you, but you can also just get energized I mean, getting, having that energy is like, 
it's like nothing nothing ever you know what i mean it's it's like there's there is no other real feeling other than that when you when you get into a to- into something into a topic or into a new hobby or into even a new tv show and all of a sudden you're like yes this is it. Like, oh, I can't wait. Like, I'm watching MF Doom, or not MF Doom, but MF Ghost. I don't know if you've seen this. Have you I seen don't. this? Have you heard about this? Um, the Initial D, the TV show that came out, the anime that came out oh, in like yeah. the the aughts. Um, they, you know, they have this whole new thing based off the whole, you know, the new manga that came out as well too, yeah, or whatever. I have seen it. Yeah, I I'm, forget. I'm, three episodes in and every single time a car comes onto the screen and Eurobeats start playing, I'm just like, <laughs> and I just, wait, MF ghost is out the new one. Three, out? We're three episodes. in. Oh, Oh, okay. I'm definitely watching that. <laughs> so for you guys, it is the new initial D it's the same creator. Yeah. Uh, it takes place in the future though. Yeah. But, and it awesome. is, and it's connected. It's not, and I'm just like, yeah, where, yeah. Is, where is it? Where's oh, hey. all of it? Hey, I got more initial D news. Oh, okay. So, I, Sung, yeah, the movie Sung Kang, yeah, Sung Kang, who plays Han in Fast and Furious, he is directing a new initial D movie. So, he better not for, fuck it up. I'm telling you, he better not fuck <laughs> it up. So yeah, this 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 franchise just can't die it just keeps coming up like and resurrecting every every now and then <laughs> nah it's great but again like little things like that like they they get you intrigued they get you they get you grabbed and and um i think you know uh, in desperate times you you got to have something that gives you some energy because um you got to find some energy from something from somewhere a seed somewhere down down within you or within within the media or within somewhere that you're looking you know other people or anything else like that and groups and collectives just will help you even if you're in a bad place i think they're actually even better when you're in a bad place in a funny way you know um because i think other people especially you know can help you pick yourself up off of the ground that would be my big thing right so yeah, you know, I mean, fair play yeah. to you uh, and for Brian uh, uh, to doing these meetups constantly and and keeping people working, even if it is just a coffee hour and we're like here and we're we're taking out our laptops or whatever. There's some ownership in that. There is some drive to say like, hey, I'm doing this, and then there's always going to be a little bit of cross conversation and and gathering after the fact. Um, and I've never been so energized when uh on you know when other people are working on things and they show them to me and i kind of look and i i get a little desperate and i'm like oh shit well they're doing this i'm not (laughs) fucking doing anything dude like i gotta do like 10 different things right now and that by itself can give you a burst of energy that you can just take in now you you know obviously don't look at what other people are doing and you know and look over the fence and be like hey what the fuck they got that i don't have that you know what i mean that's that's not the right thing to do at all that builds resentment and negativity you just have to look at it as like oh they're doing cool shit and i want to do cool shit too so how do i do cool shit and start from there you know yeah Um, yeah i organize the meetup around here and i see it all the time i see new people come in i I see them maybe down in the dumps sometimes and then they see everyone else and it really energizes them so absolutely correct I don't know how to re-engage those people and bring them back. There's been plenty of times when I've like had had a meetup or something like that, and you see that one person that comes new, and uh, you really want to bring them back. And I don't think it was that they didn't get anything out of the experience. I you know I think that they might have gotten a lot out of it. Maybe they got everything that they needed to get out of it. But it's at the same time I'd like to be able to say like, hey, you're welcome here, you know. And um, making sure that that anybody who is new is welcomed with open arms and um, and and made you know made feel in that way. Uh, I think it's one of the things I probably failed within my own groups as well too. Is I never really focused on the crowds. I never really focused on the individuals. We focus more on the topic, and that's because I mean I think it takes a lot to go and say like, hey, let's let's build a game design topic once a month and and set all this up and get a guest speaker and make food and stuff like that you know what i mean but um if you take that five seconds to say hey who's new who's returning it's a little churchy i'll be honest with you it's a little churchy but at the same time i think like 
little things like that can help people be feel like they've been seen and um yeah. you know i don't know if they need to go and like say like hey i'm this person and blah 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 but just you know I, it could help yeah. it could help it can help with retention right it can help with any of those I'm, things yeah i've learned a lot over the years you know i didn't always uh organize these super great but uh some of the tips i've learned it is to make the people feel necessary. And uh, one of the ways I do it, and it's all truthful, is that we are a small city. We're, we are the, you know, one of the smaller cities. And um, so we don't have the luxury of having you know, a lot of people or a lot of uh, experienced people. So I always try to emphasize, hey, we're, we kind of have to show up and then learn from each other, and then we do it as a group. So that's, that's one of my main uh, messagings I, I give to people. Yeah, feel that. Feel that. I mean, uh, I want to ask. Yeah, oh, oh wait, no, I just say it's like, I was about to switch. You could do this there, you know, at the same time, too. You, you don't yeah. have to be, you, have to, you don't have to go across the seas or anything else. You can, you can do that there, you know. Uh, so, you know, maybe a few months ago, as I talked to you, and, and we've been on ups and downs, and we've had some downs in terms of like where, where the positions we are at work. I was curious, uh, what are your energy levels now from the retreat? Because it seems high to me. Are you re-energized? Were you already energized from the move? Uh, like, tell me about how you feel right now. Do you know how energized I am? <laughs> that's that's how energized I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, a, he's a nearly empty battery. <laughs> I'm, a new, I'm a nearly empty. That's a 34%. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. That's like very accurate answer. <laughs> no, all serious though. Uh, jokes aside, we, we're gonna have power. We might have power outs in the next while or whatever. So, I'm trying oh, to. No. Uh, I went out and got one of these like PowerPoint batteries, and now I'm trying to see from from zero charge to uh, to full charge. How long does it take? But also just how much how much can I take out? Um, so this thing didn't even yeah. charge. I think one fucking whole battery. <laughs> it's kind of sucked, but. Um, <laughs> But to give to, to give an honest honest answer, um, I like to think that I I'm a fairly charged person, in you know in general or at least I can find find some of those things. Uh, I'm charged when I to to learn to keep going on the topic. Um, I'm charged to try to drive that into my own work a little bit more, even though I know that that's going to be difficult to do just purely based off of like the fact that if they weren't in that circle, they weren't in that loop, they don't have that context. And you know, what I mean by that is like the other designers, developers, the other, the other, you know, the whole other company, you know, in, in general, right? So I have to drive that framework and driving framework into a big beast is oh not something God. that happens you know so really where i want to be is set up for the next one that's where i want to be i want to be set up for the next game for the next thing i want to be able to set yeah. up for my own project i want to be able to to have something in my back pocket that i can just say like okay cool again it's just one topic so yes i am energized about that one thing but i'm also i'm also just like you know i uh, you do it for so long like you're still energized now i'll be honest with you like getting back into work after a good weekend away is fucking difficult you're just like oh i just don't want to even do it and even now i'm just like checking the clock and i'm like I'm get, <laughs> i've got six slack messages that i gotta go and answer to and you know what i mean and i'm just i'm just right now you know just waiting for the moment where i can really dive into some some deeper stuff so that's that's really yeah. I don't know. I I don't know how to really put it, Calvin. I'm just no. I'm I, glad again, you're being honest. You're being I, transparent. It's I'm great. just I'm just thankful for the for I'm thankful for the moment to be able to do with the with these people, and uh, and I'm thankful for the I'm thankful for at least having the job that I have, and uh, and that's gonna carry mm -hmm. me through. That's gonna carry me through to the next month. We'll see if I fucking hang myself after that but you know what i mean we haven't got we've gone this far already <laughs> <laughs> i didn't die at 25 so we might we might make it another year you know what i mean 
But I just look, I, mean, yeah. I don't know. I look, I look at my life right now. It's bloody brilliant. This is great. It's way better than what it yeah. was, you know, a number of years ago. But like, I've got a loving, loving girlfriend. I've got two cute dogs. Um, we're planning our future. We're, we're, we're picking and choosing our things. I have great friends, phenomenal friends that have really stood the test of time. Uh, and I'm hoping that I'll make more while I'm out here in Ireland. Um, and that's my plan is to make more friends, try to connect, try to reconnect, have new goals and having goals. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think this is something my dad would tell me and I, I agree with him massively, which is just, um, you know, uh, happiness is the ability to make choices, you know, uh, or not really the, I guess I'm saying that wrong, I guess, but, um, freedom, sorry, freedom is the ability to make choices. As long as you're able to make choices, okay. as long as you're able to make choices, you will, you have some semblance of freedom and in having some semblance of freedom, you can drive your own destiny and allowing for that, I think is, um, important. Not many people do have that. A lot of people get pigeonholed. They get stuck in economic problems. They get stuck in a lot of different things. Very fortunate. Sometimes it's a mindset. Sometimes it's a mindset as well. Some a people box. feel yeah. like they're stuck, but really they're not willing to sacrifice some some trivial things exactly exactly um so that's i live by that i try to at least and i'll i agree with it until i don't i don't know but i do and i probably will for a while um yeah it's not good i mean but that's that i don't know i don't know what else you know what else to go off okay. on that to be yeah. honest uh i i guess i just have one comment on that is that yeah like um things can energize you like i've seen we've I've been on teams where we'll participate in like GDC and then we'll come back and then everyone is kind of energized, but you know, it does dissipate uh, or it can dissipate a lot of the times. So these events do do that, but uh, in order to permanently energize, I mean, I, I can't think of anything else to say other than it's, it's mostly a mindset thing. Like you kind of have to change your way of thinking. If you want to be like more permanently energized, if you're constantly thinking about, oh, when's uh, when's the next cool event, then <laughs> then maybe you're gonna run into problems. So it's a it's it's a tough thing. Yeah, like I'm reading this book, art, art and fear, art and fear, and uh, I'm almost done it. It it's like a it's like the a book before the Rick Rubin like the the creativity thing, right? That. Uh, and I haven't finished the Rick Rubin book. I put it down to like uh, to pick this book up. And one of the big dichotomies between the two is very simple, which is life is a burdenous effort to create, right? Like in life, yeah. there is, it is just burdenous by itself, but it is even more burdenous to create wholly and to put something into the world, to, to be on display for other people, to put yourself out there in any sort of capacity. Many people just have, you know, they have jobs that are kind of defined by, the things that um, that come at them, right? Like, uh, I don't necessarily agree about this at the same time too. I think that everybody has their own level of creativity in what they do, but think of it as like a plumber is constrained by like the flow of motion of physics, but also by the pipes themselves and by the rules governed by, you know, the building associations, right? We have to do it a certain way and it has to get yeah. done a certain way. And it, that's always gonna be the way it's gonna be. You can't like design a new way to go and pipe things over. And if you do, you're a trendsetter and you're new and, you, and you're breaking things, but that'll have a lot more complications within your, your own structures because now your house isn't up to code until you build that into a coding standard. And that's difficult because it's a, more of a global side of things. Whereas like design and artists, the real work, the real work happens when we are not energized. I think a there's a many a time when yeah. I've picked up um, painting again, right? And I, I, I've found out over the years that like, I don't like to paint with brushes. I like to paint with a palette with, with the, the palette knives. Like I don't, I, I, I prefer that method of painting, but I'll pick it up and I'll make 12 paintings, 14 paintings in maybe like two, three weeks. Right. And I'll just go hard. I'll go really hard and I'll burst in. But that is, unfiltered in its own direction it's directionless and it, it's not me making art it's me making making for the sake of of nothing right it's it's just 
Yeah. I am just, I, I'm making maybe for like something, but a lot of the times I, I try to have some under, on, you know, undirected work like that because you never know really what's going to come from it. And it's, it pushes you outside of a comfort zone as well too. The, the first brush stroke on a painting um, closes many doors. It stops many possibilities of what that painting could be. And when we don't... Collapses the possibility space. And that's where like putting stakes in the ground is really important to try and drive direction or find direction because you don't have to have a whole game pointed out. But a lot of the times, you know, if you just... If you have that blank canvas and you are unable to, to do the hard work, even when you're not well, even when you're not feeling good, even when you don't care about it, even when you just are dilapidated and don't, don't have any of that gusto, those moments is what really defines you as a creative. And that might sound like really fucking prescriptive or whatever too, but I agree with this. Like, you can't, I couldn't call myself, I don't call myself a painter and I don't say, I say I make art, but I might make like 20 paintings a year, but I'm not an artist and what I'm making is not art. And it's not because it's undirected. It's just because I'm literally just being like, ah, ah, like psychopath moment. Like, I just gotta, I gotta do something else. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what, what would make me an artist is if I did it all the time and consistently little bits at a time and then drive through and finish things really finish them really explore the space and go go harder you know um i a thousand percent agree and uh the best gamers in the world the esports guys they play when the game isn't even fun anymore yeah but I have, uh, I have one more story to uh, throw into this. This whole philosophical talk we have about uh, working, working through the suck. So um, I, so do you know how long you can plank? I used to, yeah, I used to. <laughs> I get about four and a half I, minutes, four, four to five minutes. Oh, used damn, to be good. that's better than me. We no, no, if it's, if it's better than no, you, no, no. Calvin, then it's not better because I've seen, because <laughs> you can do more pull-ups. No, no, I'll, no. I'll, I'll bring it down. <laughs> Probably, I think the most in my youth was 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 five minute planks because we had to for 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 rugby and yeah, hurling and everything. Yeah. I think when I was later climbing and stuff like that, like I don't know, like I really don't know, but I think I would get bored after maybe like three and a half or something. Yeah, like that, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Three is about my limit now. I I usually only do planks after a bunch of other things, so I don't know how much a, I can do a raw plank, but. Honestly, three to five songs. I can already feel the pain. It's yeah. very painful. And at some point, I was curious. I was like, what is the planking world record? <laughs> planking world record. Yeah, make, make a guess. Just make a guess. I've seen this. Uh, it's a couple of hours, isn't it? It was, it was like nine hours. Yeah, yeah, And the, yeah. Guy, the guy is either, he's like 50 or 60 years old. And he says, um, his secret to planking it's just realizing that everything is suffering. <laughs> so <laughs> no matter what, no matter how much it hurts, like he's going to suffer anyway. So it's a very Buddhist kind of way of thinking, but um, that is generally how you succeed in a lot of ways. Maybe not the universal way, but a lot of people believe in that. No, I, I do too. Life is suffering. I, you know, I, I love that concept because it gets you through that gall of like yeah. of the herp to herp of like, well, this is painful. The media is this. Right, and right. The news is this. Yeah. Like, how am I when, supposed to do this? Yeah. Like, oh, When's no. the next retreat? When's the next GDC? It's like, well, it's a year from now, so get used to yeah. get used to the get used to pain. Grind. You know, yeah. I laugh at shit like that. You know what I mean? It's also it's just like a lot of times that's 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 a big mindset that you have to have. It's like, and I didn't have that. I didn't have that when I was a younger designer. I would, especially yeah. passion. If you're passionate and you all of a sudden nothing goes your way. You know, it's the whole, yeah. I think that like <laughs> our whole industry has taken on this little fucking dog inside of a, uh, inside of a bar on fire. You know what I mean? For a reason. Yeah. Right. This is, yeah. this is fine <laughs> is a mantra for fucking everything because guess what? <laughs> it's not always going to be good. And every single day it's a, it's, you're just walking through the flames and you're like, woo, like. Let's go. <laughs> exactly. We're in the indie apocalypse. Cool. Yeah. That's just how it is. Yeah. 
tell me that next week because they've been telling me that forever. It's like, shut up, exactly. dude. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm still going to do it. Whatever. Push yeah. send. Whatever. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you know, don't let the big thing. I think things... that's a good. Yeah. yeah, that's a good note to end it on, man. Just just hit send. Just let it happen. Yeah, exactly. Just send your resume and say, go fuck yourselves, everybody else. <laughs> All right. Calvin, I love you. I do miss you. Yeah. Uh, I missed you over there. And um, I would love to see you try to take this, take something like that, maybe if you can. Like, take take that energy and maybe drive it into a, a meetup over there and just, like, say, hey. Yeah. Like, you know, one maybe even if it's just breakout groups. Take the topics. I don't care. You I mean that's not my shit. Take that PDF and and try to say here's the topics. Break into groups and see where you get to. Don't put any yeah. don't put any goals on it. Just see where you get to, and then uh, I don't know. Try to figure you can you can figure out what you want to do with it from there. You know what I mean? But yeah, this was it was I, interesting. I, exactly. I'll never be invited to these cool retreats, so I'll just start my own. No, absolutely. <laughs> you me. We're gonna start our own. Why yeah, not? yeah, we probably will. <laughs> I mean, why not? But uh, but um, yeah. Uh, after as soon as we end this call, we gotta do a plank competition right after this. Let's just. <laughs> I'll get down on the floor right now. I'll get down on the floor. It won't be long. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it will not be long. <laughs> no, no, ahead. we don't need to Come record on. it. Go on. Go on, you little bitch. Let's do it. I'm here. All right. I got socks on, dude. I'm All gonna right. fall over. All right, you let me know when you're done. Are you, are you down on the ground? I'm down on the ground. You can't move right, your camera. Blanket, blanket. All right, three, two, uh, I can't. one. Yep. Ah, All right, my blanket. ass. My ass is in the air. I'm telling you, I'm doing it. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's gonna I'm, be three minutes, right? I'm <laughs> fat. I'm two. 20 pounds. <laughs> All right, no, 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 let's call it, let's call it, let's call it. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right, that's the show, guys. <laughs> We're going to have our workout uh, show episode next time. All right, I got to go back About to work. About fitness games. I got to go right, back yep, to work. Yep, later. Enjoy yourself. Later. <laughs>